Welcome back to the channel. We are here with my 97 Chevrolet Blazer that is probably the worst vehicle I have ever bought. There's a playlist for this thing which I will link up there and down in the description so you can get caught up if you'd like. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. You're going to see footage spanning about three years of me trying to use a whole bunch of different homebrew solutions to try and get a stuck trailer hitch out. Uh, spoiler alert, none of them work, but you probably already know that if you're here. Without further ado, let's get into it. So in a bit of what is almost certainly misplaced hope, I went ahead and put the blazer back on the battery charger. And since it's outside, I intended to do this all summer, but of course didn't. Last winter, I was knocking my shin into this thing all the time. Actually, it wasn't so bad because I had the tailgate open a lot and the tailgate comes out, you know, further than this. But this is super annoying. So I hosed the hell out of all this. I hosed down those uh, rear spring shackles I'm after a place. And I managed to beat the pin out of the receiver. And you can see the the rust storm that left behind. And you know, swatted this few times. In fact, have already dented the top of this thing trying to get it out. I mean, I got a feeling this is all junk, some stuff I don't want to reuse. I actually wouldn't mind being able to pull a trailer with this thing, but mm, this stuff's pretty sketchy. The whole whole truck's pretty sketchy. That pin is like neck down in the middle. I've never seen one like that. Uh, it doesn't look uniform either, so I think that pin may have just been rusted away. You guys want to see some hilarious blazer stuff? This thing is just rock solid full of like sand and road crap and who knows what from how many ever years it's been since this receiver was out of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just dig digging just, you know, a huge pile. Look at that. Just, you know, and that's in addition to the stuff that just falls off the truck every time I swing a hammer at it. But, oh my God, this is hysterical. <laughs> so yeah, if I actually do get penetrating oil down in there to do anything, it's not going to because there's so much sand and crap in here anyway. So I think I'm going to take the compressed air and see if I can blast a whole bunch of that crap out of there. That should be entertaining as well. So that was fun, but then I, you know, kind of watched it as it was going on and everything. I'm like, wow, I thought it'd be a lot more impressive than that. And then I looked under the truck. <laughs> Holy sh... Yeah. It blew crap. Uh, that's all the way up to the rear axle. That's every bit of three feet, at least. And it blew it everywhere. <laughs> uh, it's going to take a year to clean up under this thing when I move it again uh, yeah if you're wondering if you don't know what's going on i think i can show it that's the back of the receiver bar so it's just open to the world so it's just blowing all that crap out that's been thrown in there for probably 20 years and no more than i really believe in this stuff i have now sprayed that with pv blaster and we'll see what happens keeping in mind this is the exact backward from what you probably want to do as I'm heating the inside of this thing, it's about 20 something degrees out here and tonight it's going to be down to like 6. I'm hoping I can just put enough heat in this thing just to get the brake free. You know, just enough temperature differential. In fact, right now the ball is actually quite a bit warmer than air temperature, which I guess isn't a surprise. But anyway, I'm just going to keep trying to put heat in this and we'll see what happens. I'm not going to get it out tonight. I'm just hoping it'll break free in the long run. And while it's still hot, I sprayed a whole bunch more uh, PV Blaster up in it. You know, mind you, not cherry glowing red hot. I did it just a moment ago, and it's already starting to stop smoking and all that. And it looked like it did want to kind of try and draw up in there. So here's hoping. I'll show you the amount of temperature I got in it. There's a bunch of ice on the bottom of the torch now, and I can actually melt it on the ball. Slowly. So yeah, you can see it turning back into water. So we got her good and hot. We'll see what a 
evening of 6F does after, I don't know, <laughs> maybe 150F up in there. I let the torch on it for probably five or ten minutes all said and done. We'll see. So it has been about six weeks since I heated this thing up with the torch when it was like five degrees out here. I walked by it several times and sprayed it with PB Blaster. In fact, that giant spot on the ground, that's all PB Blaster. It's going to take a thousand years with the pressure washer next summer to get all this crap off the driveway from where the blazer has dumped it. We are going to beat on it some more with this four pound mini sledge and see what happens. And my guess is nothing. And when that, when nothing happens, I have another plan and I suspect it's also not going to go well, but we'll give it a shot. As I suspected, that did pretty much nothing. I could see it move just a little bit. I can also see from my angle, I can see daylight uh, all the way through that bar. <laughs> see if you guys can see that hole. <laughs> uh, so the next thing we're gonna try is a slide hammer. That's probably not gonna work either. And if that doesn't work, I think I might just cut it off. I don't know. And as opposed to some of my other videos, this is one thing I would say you can buy a Harbor Freight. This is a Harbor Freight slide hammer kit, and if you don't know what that is, it's just a big weight on a stick, and you pound that weight against that side of things so you can use it as a backward hammer, so you can hit stuff that way. So we'll screw an attachment onto this end and try and get it around the ball, maybe with those puller jaws, I'm not sure, I'll just have to futz with it and see what works. And then we can try and smack that hitch out. But it's it's not one to move in for sure, so maybe, maybe out will be easy, I wouldn't... I would think it'll be impossible in either direction, but this is actually the direction we want it to go. I didn't start here because I don't think there's going to be a great way to get on it. And I was kind of hoping if I just got it moving with the regular hammer that the regular hammer would, would work. So this is almost certainly going to be one of the more hopeful things I've tried to do in a while. This kind of hook, hook attachment that came on this thing actually does kind of grab down on there. So I'm just going to try and work around it that way I might be able to get on the nut on the bottom of this ball and see if that'll work so let's line up and try and give her a smack mm, maybe <laughs> so yeah that totally wasn't working there's just nothing to grab onto on that thing to slide hammer against. I tried getting on the nut and that doesn't work very well. And I don't see any sign of any movement in this hole. Like there's there's two pieces of metal in there and you sure sure can't tell. So I don't think it moved at all. Let me go through the slide hammer attachments and see if there's something that'll maybe get on that ball or if I've got a another idea. So this just strikes me as a really great way to break this uh, this cast adapter at the end of this thing. This is actually for the puller. But I can just set it right behind the ball and meh, we'll try the uh, Harbor Freight lifetime warranty if it goes wrong. So we'll give it a shot and see what happens. My guess is nothing. So I don't think that got us anywhere. About the only thing I haven't tried here and I'm not a particularly religious man, is prayer. So let's try that. Dear sweet baby Jesus, jump this thing out of here tonight in the morning and just have it land right there in the morning. That'd be great. Otherwise, I'm gonna assume that this is the universe's will to let this thing be stuck in there forever. So I've decided to make it my life's work to attempt every wacky way of getting a trailer hitch out that I can find on a YouTube or a web message forum. And when I say every, I mean three different ones, this being the first wacky way. And I'm gonna do these in order of what I suspect will be lack of success. I think this will be our worst contender, but we'll try it. I saw a couple of gentlemen in a parking lot uh, suggest spraying vinegar on a hitch and they were beating the crap out of it and it came out. Uh, their hitch I don't think was as stuck as mine. I'm willing to take the Pepsi challenge with anybody on YouTube for most stuck hitch on video. 
a shorter one that's welded in or bent or broken or something but we're gonna try it because why not I have vinegar and this spray bottle fairly short time ago had glass cleaner in it and I rinsed it out uh, nothing elaborate didn't use any soap or anything and I'm thinking if nothing else the vinegar may start breaking up the oil stain on the driveway where I've been spraying other crap at it that doesn't work and as opposed to those gentlemen I am gonna actually spray all this on here and let it soak for a good long time I'll probably come back every few days or every few hours or whatever um, vinegar is a light acid so if anything I would expect it to cause more corrosion not break free corrosion I suppose it's also possible it could just good God look at that hole this thing <laughs> but I suppose it's possible that uh, it could actually just eat the rust up too never know unless we try So that qualifies a couple good shocks and the gentleman in their video it appeared their hitch was moving but slowly and i suspect the vinegar was more of a lubricant than it was anything else so i've been spraying this thing down uh, a couple times a day for the last several days and i'll be honest i don't think this is going to work at all however it is kind of showing promising results sometimes when i spray it in there you can actually hear it kind of sizzle like a crackling bubbling kind of noise and when I spray it in there too, you can actually, you really can see rust run out of the bottom. Uh, I just did it, and of course, you know, that's the wrong time to grab a camera is right after you just did it. But we'll see if it'll still do it. Yeah, see how rusty the bubbles are coming out of it? I don't know how well you guys can see that, but they're very clearly rusty. You can actually kind of see it bubble as it's creeping in. So I think this is probably snake oil, but I'm open to it. We'll give it a shot. We are going to give it uh, every reasonable opportunity to work. I've just been soaking it down for days. It's certainly affordable enough to try. So it has rain, snowed, and every other freaking thing since I started this. I've been out here hosing this thing down every once in a while for like a week and a half now. But just to show you, I'm going to Give her one last final hosing. And you guys saw how full this bottle was when I started. I think I filled it about halfway. It's pretty much out now. So we've thrown plenty of vinegar at it. And I'm going to start with the slide hammer again. Because we do actually want it to come out. And then I will progress towards just beating on it with Mr. Four and a Half Pound over there. If this doesn't get it moving. But we'll see. But we'll see. Well, I'm going to say that one's myth busted. At least it's not uh, working very well for me. I mean, uh, I'll review the video and maybe this thing was moving a little, but I would have to pound on this for like 10,000 years to get it to go anywhere. It's not, it's not working very well if it is working. So we're going to try one more that I found on the internet. But before we do that, I'm going to take a big cup of water and just rinse all the vinegar off of this thing because it doesn't need to be there anymore. It might actually interfere with what we're going to try. So our next suggestion comes by way of a fairly pompous comment on somebody else's YouTube channel on their video for getting a stuck hitch out, which, you know, who would have ever thought you'd see a pompous comment on YouTube where the guy said, uh, you can do that in 10 minutes. Just take uh, sea foam and an oxyacetylene torch. And then he like in parentheses, like it says on the, the sea foam bottle and just get it real hot and shoot the sea foam in. It'll pop right out. I charge people 40 bucks a, do a piece to do them and I do them all day. It's like, okay, well, cool dude. I looked up like regular sea foam and there's no application for anything like that whatsoever. I read this can of deep creep before we were so rudely interrupted and I forgot to hit record on the camera before going on again. What I was trying to say is I read the back of this bottle and nowhere on it does it say anything about heating stuff up with a torch and then spraying it in or anything like that. Uh, this stuff reads just like the directions for like WD-40 or something. In my experience, that's all stuff like this has ever been. It's just more expensive WD-40. So that guy said that he hits him with an acetylene torch. 
and then sprays this crap in and it <laughs> and then he just pops them right out well if you hit anything with an acetylene torch for long enough it'll pop right out is molten liquid metal if you want <laughs> you know i don't think most people really want to burn all the paint off the back of their truck trying to get a hitch out and hit, heating something up to a thousand degrees but despite not finding a use case for that on the bottle i did find i think a napa video where they did say, yeah, heat it up with a propane torch, and, it, and they specifically said it does not need to be cherry red hot, and then just spray it on, and then they just crack the nut loose or whatever. So that's the method that uh, we're going to try. And I go on to say that before we do that, I uh, spent a good bit of time with the torch just heating the hitch up to try and dry it out and try and burn all the old crap out of it and stuff. And then I got it as hot as I reasonably could, uh, you know, with a propane torch. And again... You know, I could go buy an oxyacetylene torch for three or four hundred dollars, which kind of is on the agenda, but not right this second. But most people that are having this problem are not too likely to just go run out and buy a five hundred dollar tool they've got one use for. Okay, so the thing's still steaming. There's going to be water in there forever. It's been snowing and raining and everything else for the last six weeks when I've been trying this out here. But now I'm going to throw the torch, like actually back on the tube, which I had been reluctant to do before because I didn't want to, like, damage the receiver. But I think this thing's so rusty that I'd be hesitant to try and tow anything with it anyway. So I'm just going to throw the torch back here and maybe move it side to side until this thing gets hot. And then we'll try our seafoam. And that smoke that's rolling off of it right now actually is like a PV blaster and stuff like that burning. I can smell it. So we're burning out all the old uh, oil too. It's also occurred to me that we're never ever going to heat like this whole, that whole receiver bar to any meaningful temperature with just a propane torch. So I'm just going to let it sit there and get good and hot like that and smolder and see if it'll burn that old oil and stuff out. And then I'll probably move the torch back to the actual bar and see if we can get it really singing hot. And then we'll spray it and hope for the best. Totally smells a ton like vinegar too. <laughs> Well, that was like five bucks of that crap, and I don't think that thing budged at all. It is still smoking. It's probably going to for a while, so maybe it'll now do its deep creep thing. And maybe I'll keep hitting it with it for a little while, but the, the whole point of what we're going for here is to be able to pull this thing into the shop, so I don't have five years to do this. But we'll let it sit there for a while, and we'll see what happens. So I've decided to give this thing what's going to be probably 12 or 15 hours of soak time. So I'm just going to lay it on real heavy. I see rust pouring out of it, but vinegar did that too. Frankly, water would have probably done that. And we'll just try it again tomorrow. I mean, it seems like it's kind of soaking in there, but it's not doing anything. So it is the next day. We're going to put some more of this crap on here. We put a bunch of it on last night pretty late too. It's not creeping anymore. I wonder if that's because it's just a little colder now. But last night it was seemed to be creeping. I'll uh, be honest, I expect this to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> and 
because of that, I'm tempted to just repeat yesterday's footage and tell you guys I did this. Uh, so if you've never used a slide hammer, uh, you don't know that as you're doing that, you just pound the crap out of both your hands. And uh, I had some pretty nice nerve damage going for a few hours yesterday after that, so just sucks. So I'm going to give it another good honest chance, and we'll see what happens. My guess is it's going to stay right where it is. As predicted, that did pretty much nothing. I think maybe it's moving just a touch, but it's so stiff nothing's really going to work, so... We're going to call that one Myth Busted as well. I'm going to try one other one while I'm out here. I've got my three-quarter inch drive ratchet here with a one and a half inch socket on it, which is the size of the nut on the bottom of this ball. And I'm just going to see if I can work it back and forth and see if we can maybe free it up. I don't think so, but it won't hurt, and maybe it'll help that stuff get in there a little deeper. We'll try it. <laughs> no sign of mo any mo motion at all. No sign of any motion at all. Uh, nothing. Oh God, it's going to take about a thousand years to get this cleaned up. Uh, that's what, uh, I guess about nine months of it sitting there is done. And all this crap flying off the back is from beating it, trying to get that hitch out. Pretty decent pile of blazer right there. So that went pretty much exactly the way I figured it was going to go right from the start. It just became kind of a personal vendetta to at least try. And I thought it would be fun to just look up some of the more or less crackpot methods people were talking about on the internet. I really did have high hopes for the impact gun method. And I think that would work on something that isn't as advanced as this thing is. You can see just how little hitch there actually is left down there at the bottom. You know, that's basically just one piece of steel at this point. It's just not worth the effort to try and mess with. There's obviously some questionable stuff going on with the rest of the receiver bar there. I'm just hanging out under this thing. I've actually seen holes in that bar, so it's done anyway. Uh, odds are pretty good this thing's going to end up with a trip to the junkyard, meaning parts come back, or this thing just goes. Who knows? 
But if it's the parts come back kind of trip, I will probably just try and source another bar or new. They're only, I don't know, 100 and so, like 120 bucks, something like that. So I would not pull anything with this bar anyhow. I would say with whatever you're working on is as nasty as this, I would encourage you to come to the same conclusion. Speaking of, this video that is now almost three years in the making is at its conclusion. So as always, guys, I want to thank you for stopping in. We'll catch you on the next one.